Well, we'll continue this strip down the machine <coughs> and uh, just going to remove these bolts. There's three at the top here, which are already undone. Uh, 13 millimeter heads on them. Somewhat. So now we're going to uh, take the motor out. We're working at the back of the machine now. Just take the back off. Put the screws. And now we remove the belt. Take off the heater connections. And the thermostat. A little tag over there. The earth pin, earth connections. <coughs> if it was the heat you needed to get at, um, obviously you don't have to take the drum out on the back of the machine. Uh, you undo the centre nut, which releases the pressure on a the rubber seal here and it allows you to pull this up. If it's a bit tight, you may need to get a little bit of leverage underneath the edges there and twist the screwdriver and then it comes out. When you look inside the tub you'll see there's a clip which goes inside these two parts here and holds it in place. And when you put your heater back in, make sure that you get it in that clip properly otherwise you could damage it on the drum or you could melt the tank and there's the crush as you do that bolt up there that nut up so this plate comes down and squashes this seal which makes it expand and seals on the tank there and there's your heater and your thermostat here if all you need to do is replace your thermostat then this has got a the tags broken on this that holds the plug in place so then you just simply twist and pull and out comes the thermostat and there we are again this is kept sealed by that rubber and that's your thermostat if you want to check your heater in the machine before you take it out to see if it's working or not then you can use um, on some meters maybe yours maybe not there's a bodge setting just simply take your leads pull it across the pins and you should get the bleep like that obviously nothing between the casing of it otherwise it means you cut short if you put it on your if you put your meter on the ohms range then you should get about 25 ohms across the tags on this it should read about 25 ohms which this reads uh, 25 well 25.1 so we know our heat is okay I'm just sitting here loading up the film and I thought I might show you something here if you write down your voltage of your machine which is let's say it's uh, 220, 240, say 220, right? And you put this in a little triangle. Okay, put a line across there and a line across there. And we've measured the uh, resistance of the heater and it was 25 ohms, right? Bearing in mind that in actual fact your mains voltage it does vary, it goes up to 380, so we're saying 220, 240, so I'll call it 220. Um, and in times it's 25, the way you find out what current it should draw is you divide 220 by 25. And that comes out at about 9. Okay? 9 amps. So if you know any two of these values you can work out the third one so you know that that heater element 
is going to draw about 9 amps if you need to find out uh, the resistance of it what it should be then you divide 220 volts by 9 amps and then you'll know that it should be drawing it should have a resistance of about 25 ohms just a little something and to work out your power um, I that stands for current okay times E which stands for voltage if you times your current which we know is 9 by your voltage which you would say is we're saying 220 it'll come out to um, 1980 it comes out at 1980 1980 watts 2 kilowatts so there you are it's a 2 kilowatt heater okay hey see I'm more than a pretty face you know I'm going to check the continuity and if you set your meter up on the ohms range and uh, put your probes across the heater you should get about 25 ohms for your continuity on the heater and we unplug the motor connections here Let's simply work this out there's two little latches underneath there and there if you can push them up I should pull it out there's the latches as you can see that's just a push to release it next thing you need is a torx driver to undo these two bolts here and take them out next I'll just put a twisted blade screwdriver under the to remove the motor and then the motor then should lift off and call it everything so there's our two fluids of bolts and looking inside a bit further on you can see the other two where the other end of the motor just slips over those two that one and that one now here's our motor out now if you decide that you need to change the brushes here you can see one brush there and the other brush here so we're going to change the brushes <coughs> I'm going to look at the brushes I might not change them it's not that they're too tight <laughs> it's just that uh, this machine has got um, another fault on it which I suspect is in the module and if that's the case I'm certainly not going to bother because that's going to cost me 50 quid for a module and I'm certainly not going to take a chance on 50 quid so we'll just unhook this here and this monkey out of here and this one out of here there's a bit more room to manoeuvre we'll take the brush out and I'll show you what I mean by the brushes are off centre on the uh, commutator as you can see there at an angle well there's there's life left in the old dogs yet and they're not chipped or anything but there is an awful lot of carbon around the place anyway that's how you change your brushes and uh, you just unplug this here and then you can you can take it then you pull this spade connector off you, I would imagine the, the thing probably comes in a whole block there's a lot of carbon on there so these I don't know they're supposed to be pretty long so they probably need replacing anyway that's how you replace the carbon brushes and you can see it's offset so that's got to go to one side on the shaft there don't touch the commutator with your fingers if you do that you'll um, you put some grease on the commutator off your fingers or muck and then you will have a problem with the um now I've got that stuck now it's because I'm trying to work in a space away from the camera a bit there we are just do this back up here 
but it's um, they're quite simple to replace you don't have to take the motor out to replace the brushes um, I'm just taking it out because we're stripping the machine down and as I say I'm not going to spend any money on it at the moment until I can be absolutely sure that the fault lies um, elsewhere other than the uh, module that pretty circuit board um, <coughs> There was someone on the YouTube who, re who replaced a particular part. He was talking about triax, and um, if you want to try and replace them, that's up to you. So there we are. There's our motor. And there's where the belt goes on, obviously. So that's the motor, anyway. Your main wash motor. Working on the front of the machine again now. As you can see, I've, I've taken off the sump hose with the eco ball in there. Stops your soap powder running away. What I'm going to do is to remove the stabiliser legs or dampers, shock absorbers. And if you put a ring spanner over there, now this spanner is a 13mm spanner, and the idea is to press that tab in there. We're going to put this spanner over there, and then we're going to put a bar on the end here and tap the peg out. And there's the first peg out. And you can now push this damper down and to one side. Now we're ready to lift the drum out. Disconnect it from its screen mount. There, on this side. And we can lift the drum out. Separately. 